Hey, Rex. Hey. I was yeah, eavesdropping was the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a couple questions. The first would be, um, what... This actually just made me think of another question, but I guess the first thing would be, what was... What did each of you have to recognize and change about yourselves to really, you know, make your connection work again? Like, was there anything that you were like, oh, man, so I'm doing this. I have to. you kind of alluded to that earlier, but I was wondering if there's anything yeah. specific. Okay. Oh, I'm perfect. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. I understand that completely, Michael. I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. Um. Some of the things I learned about myself were um, I was so busy being hyper-focused on everything that Mike did that annoyed me or that I wasn't happy with that I wasn't looking at my own junk. And really a lot of what I was doing was reflecting on him, how I really looked and felt about myself. And so I realized, wow, I don't like myself a whole lot. I'm pretty hard on myself. Um, I'm getting in the way of being a really good partner and parent to all of these kids because I'm in defensive mode for whatever reason. Um, I also realize that I'm not treating my partner the way I want to be treated. So, of course, he's not going to react to me the way I need him to. What made you drop your yeah. guard, though, to re recognize that? Because, I mean, even as a, a human being myself, it's mm -hmm. hard to do that sometimes is, is to let our guard down and, and get past our ego. Was there anything that let you do that? I think I just got to the point where I was tired of being unhappy, whether it was in a relationship with Mike or just mm -hmm. myself. I wasn't happy in my own skin. I wasn't happy with me alone, and I was tired of it. Wow. And so I thought, well, you know, Mike can't be responsible for how uncomfortable I am just being in my own skin and myself. So that kind of takes away that excuse. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't have any other options at that point. It was just a matter of, okay, this is where I'm at. I don't like it. I can't keep doing the same things and expect a different outcome. So... I need to change something yeah. to get to somewhere different. So, Mike, despite your perfection, um, what did you... <laughs> you guys all laugh. Like, it's not a true statement. Like, come on. <laughs> like, for real? Yeah. What, what was it about you that you had to kind of recognize, like, you know, the dragon that you kind of had to slay um, to, to help rebuild the connection and make things work? But I think, like, my intentions, like, with the kids and all that, I, I went with heart with the intentions, but the delivery was absolutely wrong. It was completely wrong. And now it's sitting back. It, it's funny how those are saying the family's back together. The kids, who, the one that ran away is now back home, and we can go on, on for hours, right? One is back home now, um, you know, and the, the son-in-law is like, hey, I need you to mentor me. You know, it's just it's like it's once I backed off and just stepped away, things like started coming towards me rather than trying to make things happen. Mm -hmm. It was like, back off, see what happens. Let them be. And, and, and work on ourselves, work on ourselves. created a safe container, um, and a space for them to men when they were ready. Yeah. We just kept putting a little olive branch out there any little way we could. And it's just like, you know, it's going to be on their time frame. So we just had to be okay with that. And, you know, and that, create the space that they could do that. Yeah, and it works same with the partner. It's like, hey, you know, this is where I'm at, and this and back off rather than I, I was always the aggressor or the chaser, trying to solve the problem immediately. It was like, all right, well, for, I, I, I'm doing that's not getting me anywhere, so I need to change the way things are delivered and happen. That's that's interesting. Wow. Um, do you think, like for me? I, I had a problem early in our marriage with control and and I wanted mm -hmm. to control things. Was was that a, any bit of an issue, you think? Because I, I thought it was fascinating. You said, I had to stop chasing. When I heard that, I'm thinking, 
I had to stop controlling things and let go. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was fascinating that everything came towards you when you you stopped pursuing so much. But it was the same thing, you think? Yeah. I mean, really, what is what does life change at the end of the day? If it's home five minutes late past curfew. Is it the end of the world? Is it worth the argument? Is it worth the fight? Is it is it is it a one time thing? Is it is it a habit? You know what, what's it leading to? And it's like, was it was it worth it to create an argument if they're one and a half minutes late? Right? It, it probably wasn't worth it. And probably and now looking back would be like, all right, let's see where this is going and why it's happening, and let's see if we can change some things rather than than just going uh, just picking and pecking at them. Um, see if we can change some things behind the scenes. So um, that's kind of what I've learned is just the the delivery and, and what's most important, right? And for us, it's most important to have our kids come visit us. Like last night, we had uh, two of the kids over at the house and one of the one the youngest grandbaby, right? And it was great. You know, it's like, hey, do you? And that's the other thing too is like, is that our kids become older? It's a fifty fifty relationship. It's no longer we're trying to control things. It's like. Like I date my, they have a say so. I date my daughter every week. We go hang out. It's up to her. Like whether she wants to hang out. Hey, I I text her on Sunday. Hey, do you want to you know grab lunch? What's your schedule like? You know, you're in college and you're working. What's your schedule like? Oh, hey, I got Thursday night free. I make Thursday night free. We go hang out. Right. It's a fifty fifty relationship now, and I think that's kind of changed my kind of my outlook on everything and, and, and how, how things are approached before we're, 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 we're the, we're the parent, we're the, we're the controlling, albeit, well, not really. They still have a voice and we found out the hard way that, that voice can be running away. It could be a lot of things, drugs, mm-hmm. alcohol. I mean, we, we, we work through everything mm-hmm. as far as that goes. Mm-hmm. That's, that's really um, well said. That's really cool. Um, now what about, each one of you, what about the sessions with Liz resonated with you the most specifically? I guess Heidi, go first. Hmm. There's so much there. Um, Was there any like think- moment where you're just like, oh, I can let my guard down because this makes sense to me? Yeah, and I think, and I think first part of that was because I had gone to some therapy in the past, years before that, nothing as intense or anything by any means. But I think what initially helped the most is Liz was excellent at creating a safe place for me to be vulnerable and to be real. And I hadn't really had an opportunity like that in the past. Um, but she was very good at creating that safe space. and. I mean, everything Liz has taught me has been, you know, magical in my eyes just because of the transformation for what we applied it to in our relationship and um, everything else. But just she taught me to be honest with myself, to have a voice, to not be afraid to, you know, use my voice and speak. And it did matter how I felt and what I wanted. Um she taught me to be real as far as with myself and not pointing the finger at Mike and to see things through a different lens instead of this angry on guard lens um, and see all of the wonderful things about Mike and what he was really trying to do. And a lot of the books she recommended, I read, I, I hate to read, but I've read more books in the last five years than probably my entire life. Yeah. Um, and to come to the understanding, he's not a woman. He's not a hairy woman. He doesn't think like me. <laughs> I shouldn't assume that. And learn how men think and what's different. And when I communicate, how it's received. Because I might think I'm doing a great job telling him, you know, what I need. But he's hearing it like it's Chinese. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a good exp- that's a good uh, <laughs> good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, and just really she taught me to learn to understand this amazing man that I have next to me and how to be a partner to him and to interact with him in a way to get what I need because the way I was going about it wasn't working clearly. Mm -hmm. Michael, um, what about you? What resonated in those sessions or just like 
like was there an aha so, moment or yeah i think that therapy doesn't have to look a certain way it's not like a negative a negative thing it, it, it doesn't it's it's not in this like time frame or whatever and that, that there is a lot of work outside you're not going to go into that person's going to go okay do this and do this and in 50 minutes your problems are solved everyone's good to go and there's i mean i think we were at it nine months almost a year and we still continue to work on ourselves it's not just it, it's not a one and done yeah it's not a one and done it's not a there's no structure to it it doesn't look a certain way it's not necessarily bad it's hard to look within it's hard to look and say hey this is this is where i'm at um it's difficult but if something's worth doing, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard, right? It's it's going to be it's going to be difficult. And we're there for a reason. And like Liz says, it's like you're going to be dealing with this with this partner, or you're going to be dealing with another partner. If you don't fix this internal stuff, and I think that's where for me that I continued on the journey and, and really have spent time with like in a men's group, you know, with fifty guys and really working on myself. And they'll even tell you the changes they've seen in the past two years. Uh, they, they say you're not as prickly as you were before. I think the prick <laughs> part is, you know, in there. I'm, and I was coming just off of working with Liz. I'm like, ah, hell, everything's fixed. Everything's great. And then you go with a bunch of men who then give you men feedback rather than wife feedback. It's like, oh, there's some more adjustments there. So I think therapy doesn't have to look a certain way. It doesn't have to look horrible. Uh, but it is work. It's hands down. And you have to be ready to do the work. Well, and then understanding, too, that while you're doing the work, if you're feeling really uncomfortable and out of your comfort zone, you're probably right where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Because that means you're making yeah. some changes. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we uh, started talking earlier, before we hit the record button, uh, you had mentioned um, a group that you're a part of, Michael, that sounded really interesting to me. And I wanted to hear a little more about that. Can you tell me, uh, and for our guests, tell us the name of the group? And what kind of the purpose and the goal of that group is? Yeah, it's called We Are The Day. It's a, a group. There's a bunch of different groups of us now, but it started with 50 men. I'm in the original group one. Um, we work together. We have a call every week. We get together every quarter as a group and do some adventure, travel, swimming with sharks, uh, jumping off of cliffs, running with the bulls in Spain. Um, we do couples work too. We did with Matt Townsend down in Cancun. We've got a couples cruise in January. So we're always trying to better ourselves being vulnerable men. Um, I know I have 50 guys who will show up to my funeral. Um, I know I have, you know, a, a group of men that I can say, Hey, this is the problem I'm working on. You know, where, where is there anyone who has any advice? Um, and it's something that's lacking in today's society to have uh, vulnerable men willing to talk about real things. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about going through a divorce. I had a guy come up to me with, with that. And I was like, oh, let's talk right now. Get on and mm. mention it to Heidi. It's like two, you know, two hours on the phone with him. And, you know, their marriage is they're working on things and, and, and he's not going through divorce. Right. Like saying, hey, you need to work on things. Yeah, we have accountability partners every quarter. We get new ones. Um, we meet all the time. We do mastermind groups where we do breakthrough sessions. What are you working on? What? What you know? What what you're sharing? You know what what's what's great in your life, and then what are you working on? Those kind of things, and you know, and they they've pressured me, not pressured me. They've uh, talked to me like, hey, you know, maybe you need to deal with your with Heidi's youngest son, uh, you know, who's gay, to go just sit there and listen to him, create that container where you can actually hear what his struggles are, uh, what what's he working on, and, and so we, we we do things like that where we just take one thing that you're working on and, and try and attack it. Um, so. Therapy without licensed therapists, basically. Uh, <laughs> Anthony Robbins, Ed Milet, like you're you're pulling from all these these greats, and, and each of us are teaching each other. But it's that space where we can teach each other. Um, one of the first exercises we did was a circle, and it would be like, mm -hmm. all right, uh, who's been divorced? Boom, and you you see that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. or, you know who was abused as a child, who who's a product of divorced parents and you're like, well, I'm not alone in this world. And I think that's super helpful to be vulnerable, but it's a great yeah, group to do things like breath work and breath work. things like that too. Yeah, we do. I mean, we and we try to do everything. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, super cool. You did a deep dive into that group, right? Literally and yeah. figuratively. Yeah, yeah. Literally yeah. And figuratively. Yeah. You said it's you were boxing, um, uh, hammerhead sharks and jumping off cliffs with bulls and, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we 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 did a Moab rope swing where you jump off attached to a rope. It's it's pretty interesting, and then that 
I didn't do running with the bulls, but uh, a bunch of a group of guys did. Um, we're heading to Africa next, or we have our couples crews. So we do stuff with couples, which is great. Um, and then uh, there's a spin off the Queens edition, which Heidi's been working, doing some stuff with them. They travel, do retreats also. The retreats are the best. I mean, you just spent, you just, I don't know. It's just, it's like going away to camp with a bunch of, with a bunch of dudes. And, and then, you know, you work, you have therapists come in and, and you work and speakers and stuff like that. And it's crazy because the most successful speakers, when they get into our group, they're like, I don't need to talk about my success. I need to talk about my failures. When you talk about failures, everything starts to switch. Everything. Hey, I've done this. I've, you know, and it, and it makes it, it makes a big difference for sure. Yeah. That's really amazing. I love that. Yeah. Gosh, relationships are so important, aren't they? So important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Relationships help our key relationship, and our key relationship helps our yeah. relationships. Those connections, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. Well, you guys have been. It's, it's, oh, go ahead, Mike. I was going to say it's been interesting. I'm, I'm the oldest one in the group, and it's kind of like the tribal elder. <laughs> I'm able to share with. I'm able to share my failures with the guy. It's mm-hmm. not my successes; it's more, more of my failures. Say, hey, this is where I failed. You might want to make an adjustment here. I know coming from experience, so the experience has a lot to do with it. I'm sure as a therapy, you've seen many different things where you say, oh, I can apply this over here. And that's how it works in the men's group. They'll be like, hey, well, you know, I worked with a guy who was riding his bike across the country. I've raced my bike across the country. I'm like, do this, do this, do this. It's like, okay, great. So they come to me for certain things. I go to them for certain things. It's just, it's nice to have a group of people like that. Yeah, and I wouldn't call anything failures because according to Liz, there's nothing lost in learning. <laughs> yeah, failures are Every a great three. teacher, but I think that's really good. That it's you, a great teacher. Is is sharing that Every because three. a lot of us see things through a lens of this person is perfect. They've made all the right mm-hmm. decisions. How do I do that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, I've made plenty of mistakes and I learned from yeah. them. Correct, yeah. yeah. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, do us a favor and take a few minutes to subscribe to our podcast and the Utah Marriage Commission YouTube channel, where you can watch this and every episode of the show. When you hit the like button and leave a comment, your feedback helps us improve the show. And don't forget to share this episode with a friend. You can also follow and connect with us on Instagram at Stronger Marriage Life and on Facebook at Stronger Marriage. Be sure to share with us what topics you want us to explore or what you loved about today's episode. If you want even more resources to improve your relationship connection, visit our website at strongermarriage.org, where you'll find free workshops, webinars, relationship surveys, and more. Each episode of Stronger Marriage Connection is hosted and sponsored by the Utah Marriage Commission at Utah State University. And finally, a big thanks to our producers Rex Polanis and Alexis Alcott and the team at Utah State University. And you, our audience, you make this show possible. The opinions, findings, conclusions, and recommendations expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of the Utah Marriage Commission.